Hey, it's Jason here. I'm at Birkeland Gardens down in Mount Vernon, Washington. I'm here with Gil, who's been kind enough to agree to show me around and look at smaller conifers. Now, uh, you may love conifers in the garden, but don't have room for something that's grown 50 or 60 or 100 feet tall over time. Uh, this is the guy we want to talk to who can help us get something that isn't going to overwhelm your garden. Everything in here is considered a dwarf. I'm seeing a flaky bark pine in the back back here and you it um, it can get a little larger but if you have room for it it's pretty interesting when, when you see the bark on it because this is not a mature specimen but it, it's probably about 15 years old or so oh, okay you know, 15 to 20 you get the range of different colors in these slow growing conifers you get the golds the shades of green the blues right um, i was going to say on this flaky bark pine mm -hmm. uh, not only does it have that really interesting uh, bark on it but the newer growth or towards the top is is sort of a glaucous blue almost it, it is it's kind of yeah. nice and then it's got the uh the ornamental little cones on there as well so yeah i mean pretty in so many different ways yeah it is yeah this is an interesting plant right here. Okay. That, um, it's a Norway spruce, a weeping, which has been very common in the nursery trade for a lot of years. But this one was a hybridized um, version by Bob Fincham, who has written a number of books, and I mentioned them in my videos as well. Um, and he worked with uh, the weeping varieties, looking for the best gold one that he could develop. And, and um, this was his... Um, favorite and the one he brought to the tray. There's a few others out there, but it's called Gold Drift. So, um, Picea abies, the Norway spruce, Gold Drift is, uh, is the plant. And it just grows uh, upright as far as you stake it and then will weep over and then create that cape at the bottom as well. So yeah, I can see you like the golds. I mean, obviously here you've collected some golds, some blues. Mm -hmm. um, what's this guy down here? I mean, that's, that's again, a, got that tinge of so gold on the brand new golds, Yeah, it's, right? a, it's a con color fur. So there, the con colors are, um, they're closely related somewhat to the noble furs, but uh, they grow in California and uh, more in the mountains. And they, um, they you know, they, they have that little bit um, longer needle. And it's called um, uh, winter gold. And um, it's extremely slow growing, and um, we have a specimen in the front yard that, um, you know, that's been there for probably 40 years or so. And, and I know it's a little crowded in for winter here, but I can see it has almost a prostrate habit. Like it's, it, it, it wants to go across the ground a little it, bit. It doesn't have much of an upright habit. It'll, it'll send out a little bit of labor. It never, it's not strong, and it, mm -hmm. it always wants to be more, more prostrate. So. And, uh, this blue guy here, strong yeah. blue color on that. Yeah, that one, it's called Blue Bear. I'm trying to remember if it's uh, Lazio Carpa, which is an alpine fir, or, or a noble. Um, I think it's Lazio Carpa, um, but um, um, Blue Bear is that the name, and I've never, you know, we did graft some last year, so. Are most of these grafted, or are they on their own roots? Yeah, so conifers generally are grafted there's a few that can be grown from cuttings a few of the firs and spruces but um, to get um, to clone the plant and to be the most productive grafting is the is the preferred way and um, so well into the 90 percent of the um, slow growing unusual conifers are grafted to get you know to to propagate them on and um, and so yeah so so some way. on this end here some long needled golden needled is it, i guess these are pines yeah yeah um so this this one here double check make sure it's old it's called ogon as a cultivar name and um it is um it's a, another japanese black pine so um so you know you can see it does have some aggressive growth on it last year it had a foot of growth so it's one that you want to allow some room for but really a, a nice gold color um this color a lot of the golds um, are winter they're in you'll see them in the winter um but this one here is, is i'm pretty sure it's year round. so right um and then so on a gold one like uh like this one here right uh, is it is it pick up a lot more pronounced color like this in the winter? You say? Yeah. So when it put, flushes out with its new growth, it's going to be um, green, and then the inside will get more shaded out. Um, 
and um, and they'll the, the plant will turn totally green, and um, and it takes that cold um, and that dormant time for it to you know be. Um, you can get that gold color in it. Right, so to get a display like this, you really are looking for the uh, the fall season. You, you are, yeah. And things are always changing and, and you know, you know, you're seeing a, a miniature Colorado blue spruce there on a, what we call a standard, it's grafted higher. And um, there's a number of them in here. And it's a miniature one called St. Mary's Broom. And um, there's quite a few, um, there's literally thousands of different cultivars, but, um, but um, you, you know, they're just not readily available because it takes a long time to produce a, a, a tree. And then, um, and then the, you know, the ones that are um, favored will become, you know, get out into the industry and into, into the garden mm -hmm. centers. Yeah. So this is Pinus nigra green tower. Correct. The form of this is very upright. Very, yeah, it's, uh, it's very slender, and it, it looks like um, extremely slow. That one probably, you know, in that 12 to 15 year old range. So, um, you know, you would expect eventually it would get up to, you know, 10, 12 feet. But it's, um, for something as dense as that, and for an aggressive tree like a pine, like a black pine, yeah. um, you know, it's, uh, you, could, you could put it in a, a fairly small landscape. And know, what a like texture. It. Yeah, right, that, right. Just super fine, right. almost, yeah. almost furry texture. Right, that's, right. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool bark. Let me just get close in on that. Wow, that took some shaping. What's that? Yeah. So every every year they um, spend time uh, candle pruning and pruning on these, and then they've been dug and relined as as well. So relined meaning that you know that they're dug up and then put back in the ground again. So they have a nice fibrous root system. Certainly fit that. Not necessarily the they're a little large for the bonsai, but um, but the Nawaki style, the Japanese garden style tree, and. And I've sold a number of these this year. This is the only one I have in stock, but I have them available to me at all all times, essentially. And they're, they're a bit pricey, but for the amount of work, this one is well over 20 years old. Um, it's been cared for that whole time by the nurseryman and um, and his crew. So um, so there's a lot of labor that goes into it, and then just the rarity of it as well. All right. Thanks so much for watching today. Uh, as again, this is uh, Gil from Birkeland Gardens. I'll link his YouTube channel and the website for his, uh, for his farm here. And uh, if you have any questions about conifers, uh, go visit his channel or drop something in the comments below this video and we'll see what we can do to help.